Hey guys, welcome back, and this is going to be my no bullshit guide on how to get abs. So I want to preface this video and state that if you're looking at like famous Hollywood actors or famous bodybuilders, like let's say Chris Bumstead, if you're looking at him and you're like, you know what, I want abs just like that guy, you're probably not going to have abs just like him. And that's because genetics play a huge factor in the way your abs are structured, how they look and everything when you're at a low body fat percentage. Another example that I can use is Brad Pitt from Troy. You know, I used to watch that guy all the time when I was a kid, I'd be like, I want abs like that guy. I wanna look just like him. But when I finally got abs from training a lot, I noticed that I have way different ab genetics than Brad Pitt does. So it's very stupid and foolish to think, oh, I want abs just like one of those guys when you're not that guy, okay? You're your own person. So that's my preface here. Just try to build the best abs that you can build. This goes for any muscle group that you have on your body that you're trying to build up. Even your intelligence, like anything, your skills at any craft or anything that you're working on, just focus on the best that you can do. Stop comparing to other people because you're not that person. You're your own person. Okay, the second thing I want to state before I get into the workouts is that you need to be at a low enough body fat percentage in order for your abs to be visible. This is common sense right here. I don't think I have to go much into this, but if you're like over, let's say 18%, I know quite a few guys that are at like 18% and you can still kind of see like a four pack, but if you're over 18%, let's say, you're probably not gonna be able to see your abs. And that's just, like I said, it's common sense. You need to be below, I would say 18% body fat. So how do we get to below 18% body fat? Well, you're gonna have to eat right, okay? And my main advice here, I go a lot more in depth into this topic in my other videos. So if you wanna learn more about that, go watch those. But in this video, I'm gonna keep it nice and brief. So if you wanna like eat real food or whatever, and you have no idea which real foods to eat, you're like, what the hell do I eat, Kenny? Um, I would just say eat one ingredient foods, okay? So if you want rice, go eat an organic jasmine rice that when you look at the ingredient label, it just says, Jasmine rice, okay? Don't eat fucking rice aroni that has all these added preservatives and artificial whatever, okay? You know what I mean? Because all these things, they work to build up your inflammation and inflammation leads to obesity. So just eat real food. Got that? You know, if you want chicken, don't get a freaking chicken sandwich from McDonald's, okay? Go get a few chicken breasts from the supermarket. Go home, cook them up on your stove, all right? Eat real food. Now the V-taper look is, it's pretty simple to build. I'm gonna be completely honest here. You just have to do the right workouts and stay away from the wrong workouts. And I'll get into that in a few moments, but it is simple to build, okay? So what is the V-shape? It's wide shoulders and a thin waist. So let's dive into the workouts that you need to be doing. Now, first off, I believe that the best ab workout that you can be doing for your abs to build this V-shape is going to be any variation of a crunch. My personal favorite is on a Roman chair but I realize not everyone has these. So if you're a little more advanced and you could actually add weight to yourself, I would just suggest putting a 10 pound dumbbell on your chest and then doing a crunch like that. Have something anchoring your feet and then just perform some crunches. Now, if you do have a Roman chair, when it comes to form, we are bringing our bodies as low as parallel to the ground, never lower, and slowly coming up, keeping our core engaged the entire time. I do two to three sets of around 10 to 15 reps. So next up we have planks. Now planks are a great workout for core stability. I only recommend the regular form of a plank because most of the other variations that people do involve way too much training of the obliques. And I'll get into this in a little bit, but if you wanna build a good V shape, you're gonna have to stray away from training your oblique muscles. Now I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to do a plank, but if you live under a rock, you're going to come down on all fours. You can either use your forearms or your hands. The forearms variation is much harder and you're just going to hold while tightly engaging your core. I usually do these for like a minute or two. If you're less advanced, just do them for like 20, 30 seconds until you feel a burn. Okay, if, you, if you're crazy like me and you wanna go to failure, go to failure. It's fun, trust me on that. Another form of a plank is an ab wheel rollout. Now these are like the most advanced form of planks that you can get. Right here, as you can see, I have one like those, uh, it actually helps you out this type of ab wheel, but I know a lot of guys that use a regular ab wheel and it's much harder with that. I know for a fact that this workout can be effective, but I'm also going to be very honest here and transparent. I never do these, but they do require significant core strength. Okay. So if you're on the more advanced level, I would definitely recommend doing these for the form. 
come down on your knees while tightly engaging your core, roll out as far as you can go without losing that stability and tightness in your core, then come back and repeat. Now, it's also important to realize and to make sure that you don't mess up your lower back while doing this, okay? Make sure your lower back is straight, you're not like camel back in it or whatever, so it doesn't look like you're humping the ground. Keep your lower back stabilized. I recommend two to three sets and around 10 to 20 reps. So for the last part of the video, I'm just going to be talking about the only ab workouts that I actually still do because I have abs now. I've been training for a while. I really only do these and these are any ab workout hanging from the bar and that is a pull-up bar. So first up, we have the hanging knee ups. So grab onto the bar like you're about to do a pull-up, engage your core, then slowly bring your knees up and repeat. Make sure not to do this movement right here. As you can see, it's too fast and it's causing me to kind of use my arms as the momentum, as the driving force, and I'm not really engaging my core as much as I can. Instead, as you can see right here is the correct form. You still wanna look like an athlete and kind of move a little bit. I wouldn't really call it a hitch, but you can see right in this video that like I'm kind of moving, right? Like an athlete, I'm not just like still moving my knees up and down because I wanna keep my core engaged the entire time. So I'm actually not bringing my legs completely down because that would unflex my abs. And I wanna keep my abs flexed and engaged the entire time like I just said. For sets and reps, two to three sets and around 10 to 15 reps. Sometimes I do 20, 25, depends how crazy I'm feeling on that given day. Now the second and last ab workout, which is probably definitely the most difficult ab workout I know of, is the hanging leg raise. So just like the knee ups, we are grabbing the bar, engaging our core, and then without jerking your body at all, slowly bring your toes to the bar. You can see me doing it right here. Not to brag or anything, but I have pretty good form here. Okay, so if you're looking at someone to kind of picture frame your form after, you can just use this right here. So like I said before, this is very advanced and even I can only do like eight to 12 reps. It's very hard, okay? And your abs burn out. I've actually gotten ab cramps from doing this a few times. So again, very advanced, be careful. I recommend two sets to failure for this. Now, like I said before, I'm also going to be talking about which ab workouts you should not be doing. So anything that is related to oblique training, don't do. Now, this is obviously if you're wanting to build the V taper, okay? Now, if you don't really care and you're going for more like that blocky look, you wanna be like wide, you know, you train your traps all the time, you wanna look like fucking Bane from The Dark Knight Rises, if you wanna look like that, yeah, go train obliques. But this video is for guys who wanna build that V shape. And I'm not the first guy to say this, okay? Steve Reeves, who is like one of the most popular bodybuilders of all time, he was stating this back in the 1940s. And countless other guys on YouTube have been saying this over the past couple years. So this is nothing new. So this means no Russian twists, no side bends, no hanging corkscrews, anything working the sides of your abs is a no-no. All right, guys, that wraps up everything I want to discuss today. So if you want to build a V taper, do these workouts and make sure you're eating real food, not bullshit. All right, I'll see you guys sometime next week. Peace out.